Okay, so um, reading from Matthew 22 and uh, verses 37 onwards, um, maybe from verse um, 35, then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Uh, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So the Lord was um, you know, giving a very foundational um, truth to the scribe. Yeah, when he asked, you know, which is the great commandment? And one was about, it was twofold. And uh, it was about loving God and loving people. Right. So when it comes to um, leadership, it's it's about loving God. It's and about loving people. So the people whom we lead, um, we are there to lead, instruct, uh, direct, and so on. Um, but it comes from a place of loving them, right? And uh, when we say loving people, it doesn't mean that um, we don't speak the truth. We understand that um, because love. <clears throat> when it comes to love, we need to speak the truth in love, and uh, love is not devoid of truth. So it is about speaking truth. It is about uh, when you when you express love for someone, it is about correcting them in love. It is about confronting in love. It is about uh, it is about all that, right? So it is about being firm. It is about discipline and everything in love. So um, just love doesn't mean that uh, acceptance of uh, anything and everything in terms of in terms of speech and behavior and everything. But um, um, if we truly love, then uh, we need to intervene. Okay, so because that's how God loves us. I love God loves us. God cares for us that he would step in and uh, and do what is required what is necessary so we don't step out of line or we don't um, you know uh, end up in a in a different place when it comes to the destiny that he has for us so um, so when it comes to loving people you know this is very very important okay so um, but the foundation is this that when it comes to leadership it's about loving god and loving people as well Okay, so let's pray. And um, and uh, uh, in today's class, we of course we're going to be looking at that aspect of people and how do we win with people. Okay, so let's let's pray. Father, we we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this time. We thank you for uh, this exhortation, this instruction, God. That uh, um, Lord, the greatest thing is to love you. His commandment is to love you. And at the same time, love the people whom you have entrusted, God, whom we oversee, oh God. And uh, yes, Master, we pray that uh, you will enable us to do it in the right way, Father God, because um, Lord, the way when we do it in uh, spirit, God, and and the letter, God, we know that it will be it will give life rather than Lord take away something, God. We know that it will build up. Lord, rather than break down. And so, Master, we pray that even as we prepare ourselves, Lord, uh, to be the people whom you've called us to be, Lord, to be the leaders, Lord, whom you've uh, called us to be, oh God, we pray that that uh, you will teach us this important truth as well. And uh, I pray that you will enable us to walk in this truth, Father God. Yes, Master, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands today. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, yeah, so let's look at um, this the second section that we've been looking, we've been studying. Um, you know, we're just starting off with that. Um, so it's about winning with people. Okay, it's about winning with people, meaning it's um, we're looking at a win-win situation uh, when we are leading and. Um, uh, so, so we know that you know leadership involves people. Leadership cannot be in a vacuum. Um, you know, it uh, ministry involves people, right? So we are leading people. We are engaging with people, right? So I, many times we we could be very skillful <clears throat> at what we do, 
but if we um, you know if we miss out on this aspect of skill which is relating to people which is uh, you know uh, motivating encouraging um, uh, in other words engaging with people in the right way um, the ones whom we are leading the ones whom we are giving oversight to if we miss out on that aspect of skill right then uh, our uh, our knowledge and ability uh, you know doesn't really it, it's it's a small part of it right we need to have this skill as well uh, in order to uh, in order to bear fruit in order to see success because uh, i mean the lord very clearly said you know this is the greatest commandment that it involves god it involves receiving from him and it involves giving to and uh, expressing to um, the people right so um so the thing is that um, we need to have that perspective you know some of us are maybe gifted in, in that area or we are it's it's a natural part of our personality right so in relating to people in um, in uh, you know putting people first and uh, we have a natural tendency towards it right but whether, whether we have a natural tendency or not whether it's a you know natural part of our personality or not this is something that we we can and we need to grow in right and all of us you know we we are at different levels we could be at different levels uh, in this particular area and when it comes to uh, dealing with people understanding people um, and and so on okay so uh, so we, we can uh, develop it okay that's the first thing that we need to understand that if we feel that okay we are lacking in this area okay not fine i'm not able to really you know crack this whole thing uh, or i'm not able to find traction with people um you know get a grip on uh, the people whom i'm leading uh, i always uh, seem to be at uh, you know having some kind of loose ends here i seem to have a you know, lose that grip then um yeah we need to we need to know understand that we can grow in this right it is possible to grow in this right so um yeah so let's uh, let's look at uh, uh, some of these principles and we are looking at uh, uh, this book uh, a compilation of uh, uh, the content from winning with people by john c maxwell now, john c maxwell um, uh, uh, has written many books on leadership and and teams and so on and maybe you've read a few of them so this is a compilation of uh, uh, of um, con the, con the content that we are sharing right now is a compilation of that right and um, john c maxwell uh, uh, was a very uh, uh, you know uh, uh, very successful i think uh, uh, pastor and a big congregation and uh, and he just felt the call of god to get into you know uh, uh, while pastoring the church to start write, writing the books on leadership um, that will actually benefit the body of Christ and uh, the world beyond right so um, so he he just went into that and uh, it proved to be a very very um, fruitful uh, venture right so many lives were touched many lives continue to be touched and he continues to because he's a very um, kind of elderly person now but he continues to give uh, you know uh, workshops and uh, and so on on leadership so um, and and the and the basis for that is uh, is the bible the basis for that is is the lord jesus himself so he draws a lot from the word of god and uh, and shares that so so we're going to be looking at that you know winning with people by john c maxwell and these are uh, so we're going to look at five parts to it okay so one is getting ourselves ready to relate with others you know what is it that we can do personally uh, and these are all you know small nuggets of information and small um, you know changes that we can make or small learnings uh, and maybe some things that we are already walking in right so these are things that that will really help us in order to get ourselves ready to relate to others okay, what does it can work it can act as a checklist as well you know am i having this in my life am i doing this right so getting ourselves ready second thing is what is our outlook okay what is our outlook is it in is it uh, you know when it comes to relating to people it helps if my focus 
is outwardly rather than inwardly right the focus is on others um then it causes us to thrive and flourish right so it's not that we we do not mindful of our needs or mindful of our areas that we work on right but when it, it's not that but then we go beyond that and the focus is on others okay the third thing is uh when it comes comes to us and and uh, and the people that we are working with um we need to build something which is trust you know that's the bedrock or that is the basic foundation uh, based on which you know all a successful relationship can be um, can be nurtured okay which is trust right so building mutual trust you know how do we do that to give trust and to receive trust as well then the fourth one is about nurturing relationships so relationships they don't happen automatically okay so we think that okay i you know I'm, this is great you know we just having a great friendship or great uh, relationship and it's everything's going fine but the thing is that you know uh either intentionally or not we we do some things which actually nurture relationships okay so um so when it comes to a work relationship when it comes to a ministry team kind of a setting um we need to intentionally nurture intentionally nurture these relationships which means that we need to take a step and do certain things uh and carry out certain things in order to have those results right so um so what are those uh, or some basic principles about nurturing then uh creating win win relationships right so where um, we as leaders or we as facilitators you know the overall um the overall objective is also met and also the person you know individually or personally also uh, adds value you know there's value add to their lives right so we are um adding something into their lives um in order to win in order to uh, help re uh, uh, help those kind of uh, relationships right um help uh, reach those objectives both personally as well as corporately as right so let's look at the first one first section which is getting ourselves ready to relate with others okay so again a basic thing is that relationships are essential part of our life right um some of us are maybe we are we are used to doing things on our own and we 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 maybe we keep to ourselves right um and uh, we are comfortable doing that maybe right but we need to understand that when we work with or in a team then it involves people and we need to break out of maybe our comfort zone if we are comfortable um just working with <clears throat> excuse me working with ourselves or doing things on our own uh or not really interacting with others then we need to kind of grow out of that or stretch beyond that comfort level okay so um there's only so much we can do <clears throat> when it comes to doing things alone but there's a lot more that can be done when we when we do things together okay and that aspect of it we're going to look at um the third uh, section which is the uh, which is about teams and teamwork and team dynamics right so that is also a very interesting one so we see that okay, how do you function in teams and that so on so we we, we realize that okay there's uh, one uh, uh, there if we can do one thing uh, alone then we can actually to 10 things when we put our strength together when we uh, you know that one thing is greatly multiplied uh, enhanced when we do things together and and so on okay so um so yeah when it comes to uh, getting relate getting ourselves to relate to others we we understand that okay we can do more we can do much more when it, with people okay so we don't have to isolate we can actually see that yeah, there's this great value doing things together okay so uh, like somebody said 15% of success is attributed to job knowledge okay how do i do things done how do i get this um you know how do i acquire this skill how do i apply this skill like 15% of it and 85% of it is our ability to 
connect with people and when we when you're saying connect with people maybe um, you know encouraging motivating to get things done maybe ideas um, getting of ideas implementation of ideas right uh, there's so many moving parts to uh, a particular process right uh, in the sense that I'm you know if you look at the machinery itself there are so many so many moving parts so many things that are you know for that output to come right maybe it's uh, something to do with your you know a simple thing like your gadget like your washing machine or uh, or you know whatever that you use daily you fit, uh, an appliance you see that there are you know many small things that are there they go together they work in order to achieve that output so similarly in any team or organization there are many um, functions processes right so and so which means that the 85 percent of it of success is the ability to connect with people and to get uh, you know make ensure that everything goes smoothly so it, it depends on how we relate how we connect and how we get the things done right so if you look at ministry <clears throat> Okay, we we work with other people. Okay, Ecclesiastes four talks about that, right? About the, the cord of three strands and how it is strong and so on. Um, so we work with other people. Okay, um, so no person is an island, no person is in isolation. Uh, we also learn from others, right? Uh, we see um, when it comes to um, uh, the body of Christ itself. <clears throat> One Corinthians twelve talks about that. You see that we are the body and uh, we are members of that body and each member does its part right so um, does its part of uh, receiving or ministering uh, or uh, receiving strength or giving strength and so on so we learn from others okay so and we are also uniquely gifted in order to edify one another okay 1 corinthians 12 talks about that first peter 4 um so, you know, you can read these scripture at leisure, but just wanted to, you know, just mention that we are called to, uh, you know, to be in the body. We are gifted uh, to serve in the body. And uh, and again, we are commissioned by the Lord to disciple other people, you know, to reach out to other people, to be that city on a hill, right, to be that influence. And of course, we said, you know, leadership itself is an influence for good right to be that influence for good right so there's always uh, that element of uh, the or if you want to call it that the people factor in ministry right the people factor it's so it's it's not just about uh, how much of a revelation that i receive from god and how much of uh, the gifting that i'm able to walk in uh or you know the empowering that i'm able to walk in um and so on it, it, it's it's one very important aspect of course but the second part of it is that you know all this is done that people might be edified you know, the lord gives revelation and anointing and everything so that we might reach out so that we might disciple so we might you know whatever a realm of influence that he has placed us in that we might actually express the uh, Christ right? um, and be Christ to others. Right? So, um, so here are some uh, principles that will enable us to relate to people. Now, these these are some things that you know, we have learned, but it will help as a, a reminder. Okay? okay, the first thing is the lens principle. You know, we know we all know what a lens is. Lens brings clarity focus um, uh, and different kinds of lenses and I'm just talking about you know um, a, a lens generally whether it's in a, uh, in a pair of spectacles or in a binoculars or a camera helps us to focus uh, helps bring things to focus helps things bring things to clarity and um, maybe it could be sometime it could be just magnifying things um, and so on like in, a, in the case of a binoculars or a microscope you know helps us helps things uh, to be magnified and see things clearly right so um, so the lens principle talks about how we need to see ourselves okay um, so the, our mental picture or the image that we have of ourselves 
is very important. And we might say, okay, uh, we might think, okay, the image that I have for myself is important for myself, for me personally. Very true, right? And that's what we've been learning, you know, inner wholeness and so on. So um, talks about how we perceive ourselves. Okay? And we studied that uh, in, uh, in Christ, our identity in Christ as well. Uh, seeing that our sense of self-worth, okay, our sense of um, identity, we it's very, very important. Okay, so the lens principle actually is talking about that. How do we see ourselves? Okay, um, So do we see ourselves the way God sees us? Okay, or do we see ourselves um, only based on our limitations, um, only based on, you know, what is it that we cannot do, or uh, do we have a poor sense of self-worth, a poor self-image? Okay. Um, now, this self-image is, uh, it, it's a very, uh, you know, it's a puzzling thing because, uh, uh, like, in truth, we might be skilled. In truth, we might be gifted. but the way we see ourselves completely changes that. Okay, like in truth, we might be strong. In truth, we might be. You know, in reality, we might be able to do a lot of things. Other people, other people could see that. But if we don't see that, right, if we don't see ourselves, and that is why it's 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 very very important to see ourselves the way God sees us. Because God sees us beyond our faults. Like our faults are not, you know, it, it's not hidden to him. He sees it. He knows these are our weaknesses and these are our shortcomings, limitations. But he sees beyond that. And he knows that in union with him, this is how this is what we have become. More than conquerors, right? Uh, justified and sanctified and, and strengthened to to do uh, beyond, to go beyond our natural limitations. Right? So it's very important to, to see that. And this, this self-image, uh, or even a, a poor self-image, uh, or a healthy one, is developed over time, right? Based on our experiences, good, bad, and learnings, and uh, yeah, maybe successes and failures, and we form uh, an image of ourselves, right? And uh, and we say, okay, th these are some things that I, I don't want to get into uh, because I've had, you know, my uh, history of failures in that. Or these are things I can readily get into because I had a history of success in that, and so on. Okay. Um, if you look at uh, some of the people in the Bible, you know, David, uh, when he when he was, uh, I think, classic example is when he's uh, going to face Goliath. And he's running towards him, right? And, and he's, he's shouting, "The battle belongs to the Lord!" And he's is actually going towards him. Right? He saw himself as someone who was victorious. He saw himself as someone representing um, Yahweh, right? Uh, and uh, and he is running towards battle, to, towards the giant, towards the problem, uh, with that understanding. Right? We look at uh, you know Jabez. Uh, and uh, we see that Jabez goes to God and with that prayer and saying that, oh, that you would enlarge uh, my, uh, my, enlarge my pens and, and I want to be a blessing, right? He's, his very name meant the one who causes pain, the one who causes pain. So he wants to, you know, change that. So he goes to God and asks him. Gideon, right? Gideon saw himself when he had that encounter uh, with the angel of God, he saw himself as someone who is the least. Okay, he's the least. The tribe is the least. So it was also almost as if, uh, you know, uh, uh, when when arise a man of valor, it was almost as if he was turning around to see, you know, who is it? Who is it? The angel is addressing, because he was hidden and high and threshing grain in a wine press uh, for the. Because the enemies would come and and burn everything uh, if they see it. So, and uh, everything was in hiding. And over a period of time, that had that is what has developed. That is what he perceived himself to be. I, I'm 
one of the um, one of the smallest of the tribes, not very significant. And uh, yeah, we are not people to to contend with, uh, or in a, in a sense, uh, we are not people who who are of any significance and can contend with problems or can bring solutions. We are not that kind of a people. We are uh, we are you know this is who we are. Right. So he he identified himself with that, right? and that had formed his self image. So when when the angel said, "Arise, O man of valor," and we read that in Judges, and we see that you know he has a problem with that. Now, don't you know this is who we are? Right? So so this perception of ourselves is go definitely going to. Uh, is something that we carry in or carry forward in relating with people, right? It could be a ministry team, it could be um, a work, you know, a work scenario where we're a team that we're leading, or you know, if, if you're not at leading it, uh, a team, it, it could be just people whom we are interacting with, right? So it's going to have a bearing. It's definitely going to, you know, something that we are carrying in. In what way? Right? In what way will it, uh, will it will it influence, or in what way will it affect that? Right. Um, well, for one thing, if it's if you're going to have a very poor self image, there are two things that we could do. Okay, we could react, or uh, um, like uh, like Gideon did, right? In maybe when it comes to a pressure situation, right? We could draw back and say. Um, you know, I'm not capable. Okay, in despite having strength and ability, we could just draw back and say, "I'm not capable. I'm not capable of this." Right. So we could, we would not do certain things. We would not get into maybe new initiatives, or we, we would not get into those things. Right. And so uh, it will affect the way we relate to people because maybe people come with ideas. You know, people come with uh, certain things, and then uh, and our perception is colored by how we see who we are. Right. And even when it comes to maybe just meeting and relating to people. Okay. Let's say we have a we ourselves have a poor self image, and here's another one who's uh, you know who's it's all confident and who's just uh, you know very positive and oozing confidence. Then we meet with someone, or we see certain abilities that uh, they are capable of, and we uh, you know we kind of shrink, right? In their presence, in our interactions with them, we kind of hold back, withhold, shrink, or maybe we avoid, right? Because they remind you of all the negative things so we kind of hold off we avoid and uh, we don't like to be around such people so it's a very negative scenario that we are painting right so if it is for self image so so that could happen or the other thing is we try to do something in order to put that person down okay we because it's, it's because of our insecurity, you know. So we feel insecure whenever we are around that person. We feel that, you know, hey, this person is actually threatening me. He, uh, he or she is threatening my ability or threatening my uh, credibility. Because you know, this is how I see myself, and I see that that person is actually capable of much more. I see. And because of that poor self-image and insecurity, I try to do things in the flesh. Right? I try to show myself as someone who's actually capable. Right? And it doesn't come from a healthy place. I'm, and it doesn't have a healthy expression. So I, I'm trying to do things. I'm trying to you know, just tell, show others, or maybe show others in the team that Hey, actually, I'm actually better. I'm always better. I have solutions. I am capable. So we are trying to defend, trying to portray, trying to be, you know, we are in, in, trying to actually show others that we are actually this. Okay, and it's a great 
pressure on us all the time. Every time we are around maybe a certain kind of people and we are trying to be, trying to do something. And, uh, you know, we, we might say, okay, isn't that good? Isn't that good? You're actually uh, trying to do something and out of our comfort zone, but it doesn't come from a place, a healthy place, right? The objective is to show that I'm actually capable, while inside you're feeling that I'm not. Right? Inside you're feeling I'm worthless and I'm, uh, I'm not and I'm insecure, while all the while you're just forcing to, to portray something which you're not on the inside. Now that's unhealthy, right? Whereas if you come from a place of a place of strength, a place of truth, where we have dealt with it, you know, we're saying, "Yes, God, uh, you know, I need to be strong. I need to be, and this is who you have made me to be." Right? If by the Spirit you put to death the things of the flesh. And the Bible, uh, you know, says in Romans eight that we will live if by the Spirit you put to death the things of the flesh. The flesh is, you know, constantly maybe, you know, this is also an aspect of the flesh, which is the unrenewed mind and thinking, and uh, and and um, you know, unrenewed living, where the flesh is saying that okay, this is no, you've not become a new creation. You're still a product of your past. You're still, you know, rooted in your past. You're still you know, in that chains of your past experiences and so on. So it's a, it's a, you know, it's a prison, right? So if, uh, you know, if we are living according to the flesh, then it's going to, it's going to drag us down. But if by the spirit, we put to death the things of the flesh, we put to death this image, we put to death um, this, you know, the, the fact that we have been carrying the image of the old, old Adam, the first Adam, but now we are in Christ, and the last Adam, that image is what we carry. Right? This is who we have become. So when we do that, and when we look at ourselves through that lens, the lens of truth, right? renewed, uh, made righteous, then it actually is a preparation to relate to people. It's a healthy way to relate to people where we are not threatened by anybody's success right? or anybody's failure doesn't really make us rejoice. Right? Oh, it's fantastic that that person, I'm better than them. Now, you know, that failure just proves that I'm better than them. Um, you know, so we're, we're not doing any of that. Right? We are. We are in a place of quiet confidence in Christ, no matter what kind of people that we are surrounded with, no matter what, because we will we will have all kinds of people. It's not like you know it's going to be a very perfect ideal situation, right? Uh, even in a in a ministry kind of a setting, we will have different kinds of people, uh, different levels of maturity, and uh, right and and journeying on that journey. So we will have different kinds of people. Uh, maybe you know not in the leadership team. Maybe you know that could be a different um, thing. But then you know, the, the ones whom we are leading, right? We'll have different kinds of people, and so um, we need to be in that place of uh, Christ's confidence, right? Christ's confidence and and that wholeness. So that's the first one. Okay, the lens principle. Okay. Um, then now this might seem like uh, opposite of what we shared just now lens principle. This is called the mirror principle, which means that we need to be aware of our strength, weakness, what really motivates us, what does not. We need to be aware or self-aware. Okay, how we look at a mirror. Right? So uh, when we look at a mirror, we see a reflection of ourselves. Okay, and an honest reflection of ourselves. Right? If a hair is out of place, we know it. Okay, if hair face is looking puffy today. Okay, we know it. Right. So an honest uh, reflection of ourselves, and uh, we must be aware. Right. We cannot be uh, having an uh, an escapist, a delusional uh, thing about ourselves. We need to be aware. Okay. So. It, it, 
is it opposite of what we saw just now? It's it seems so because uh, you know in the lens principle we are saying okay I need to see myself the way God sees me, and here also you know we we need to be aware that hey uh, these are certain problem areas. Okay, delusional is where we say these are not problem areas, but if if it's if it's the truth, then we acknowledge these are problem areas, but it's a work in progress, right? This is these are problem areas, but this has been covered by the blood of Jesus. I see that. Right? So that that um, you know uh, uh, or, or that perception of ourselves, the way we see ourselves, we need to have a very honest look at ourselves, right? Um, so this is what the psalmist says, right? And Psalm 139, 23, and 24 it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. You know, he's just, he's just laying himself bare and open before God. Like, we can do that, right? We can trust him. There's no one else whom we can go to, to this with this level of vulnerability. Hmm? Praise God. Right? So we can search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So he's saying, Lord, you, know, you don't, you know, that this comes from a place of knowing that God, my Lord will not reject. And he is, um, like, especially for us in this dispensation uh, of the cross, we, we we see that he has already paid the price. He has taken that punishment for the wrath of God was upon him uh, and all that, right? So he has taken every curse that we might receive the blessing of Abraham and, and all that. So we, we can, with more, yeah, you know, uh, uh, with more revelation and understanding, we can actually declare the psalm or pray this prayer. Say, Lord, search me and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So the Lord gives us clarity. And when we and he gives us clarity, when we, when we see ourselves, there are some things that we do not like about ourselves. And we say, okay, God, this... I do not like, and definitely God does not like right? this uh, this attitude of mine uh, or this characteristic trait of mine. Uh, I don't, and that needs to come. That needs to, you know, go through the cleansing of the Word of God. That needs to be renewed by the Word of God. That needs to be renovated by the Word of God. And the Word of God, which is the hammer, needs to break this into a thousand pieces and just clear that out. Right? We 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 bring ourselves to that right we commit ourselves to that right? and uh and especially when it comes to our motives our intentions okay um so this is very helpful then we we will not live uh, uh, a dual life right what we say what when we relate to people what we think in our hearts, or what we you know, know in our hearts, uh, what we are processing on the inside, it's the one and the same, right? We are not being, uh, you know, we are not saying something in front of people or to them, and thinking something else about them or behind their back, right? So, a very honest. Look at ourselves. Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Okay. So being aware of our motives. Okay. So our because our decisions and our, our actions, whatever we are implementing, comes from that. Okay. So what do what is our motivation? What is our motivation for serving? What is our motivation for you know, uh, ministering in a certain way. What is our motivation for helping someone? Um, so we align that with the truth, right? So, um, so that is very, very important. Okay, and uh, if what we see that there is a there is a variation, right? We see that deep inside, we are not really living in alignment with with the truth okay 
there is a change. You know, we are someone else on the inside, we are someone else on the outside. And we can change and we need to change. Right? We need to we don't have to wait. What are we waiting for? Right? We need to make that switch. We need to make that alignment, that shift on the inside, so that what is on the outside also measures up or matches up. Okay, so so the mirror principle to be to be really aware uh, and to be aware what is it that is you know you'll study more I think in third year when we do uh, when you talk about uh, um, uh, I think skills and values um, is what we are going to look at uh, in one of the semesters so um, you know our, our awareness of self uh, I'm sure you've seen. Uh, you know, uh, little babies, uh, children, they are upset. Right? They're not sure why we, they are upset. Right? It could be, uh, it could be hunger. It could be, uh, it could be, uh, maybe they are sleepy. They're upset. Right? And, and they are coming out with all kinds of cranky behavior. You know, they're just refusing to do that. And they're, you know, throwing a tantrum. And, and we're asking them, you know, what is it? What is wrong? What is, and they're not able to express. They're just crying. Oh, I don't want this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And uh, you know, they're throwing all kinds of tantrums. And uh, and then the thing is, they are not aware. They are not aware what is going wrong. They are not aware why they are doing that. They, they just all they know is that something is, you know, uh, something is wrong. Or I don't feel right. And therefore, it comes out as a tantrum. It comes out as you know all that behavior as as. You know, as parents, that we know that we experience that, and um, and the thing is this: that we as adults, we need to be aware, self-aware. You know, what is it? Why am I feeling upset now? Right? What is it? You know, put the finger on that. What is it that causes me to like behave this way? Why am I having this kind of a temperament now? Be aware of you know this great strength because then we can then we can actually go to the root of okay it's it's because of this it's because I didn't really process it process this with God it's because I actually you know I'm feeling a little hurt about what that person said right while I'm trying to convince myself no it's not actually I'm feeling hurt because of and that's why you know whenever I interact with that person when I uh, relate to that person I'm, I'm behaving a certain way. Right, uh, either you know whatever it is. So we we become aware, like the the intents of our heart are becoming clearer. Right. So then we can actually address it, process that with God, take it to the Lord, like the psalm is saying, Lord, you you know me, try me, know me, my anxieties, anxious thoughts, and lead me in the way everlasting. Right, so um, so the Lord illuminates that part of us, illuminates and says that hey, this is this is why this is the problem. And he just puts his finger, you know, um, this is this is what it is. So then then we are in a better place, having having dealt with it, having processed it, and then we are able to relate to others. Right? Either we make that change, we make that shift, or we ask for some time. You know, I, I need some time. Hey, just, just give me some time. Or we do some things. You know, just go for a walk. Go for a, you know, uh, just, you know, you need to do that in order to, um, you know, allow that change to happen. You need, I mean, different people have different ways of doing it, right? So, um, and we're processing with God, of course. Right, but um, we need to do that. So this self-awareness, right, it's not a new age thing, but we need to be aware uh, and be truthful of what is happening within us. Okay, so we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, let's look at one more. Okay, the, the thing is, uh, the third one is um, the pain principle. Okay, uh, the pain principle. So we looked at the lens, we looked at the mirror, the third one is pain principle. And why are we looking at these principles? Um, you know, so we can relate to people. It's a preparation to relate to people. Okay, so this this is something that we need to understand. It's that um, you know, people who are hurting hurt others. 
Okay. So uh, in other words, hurt people hurt people. And if I'm hurt, uh, I pass on that hurt. I could do it in different ways. I could lash out. I could be. I could go quiet. Uh, you know. But hurt people hurt people, right? And uh, the response to a problem. It could be a small problem, maybe some small issue. But our response to it need not be in proportion to that, the, you know, the, the complexity of the problem. But it could be in proportion to the hurt that we experienced in the past. Right? The, uh, still, the unresolved things, you know, the pain which is there, and our response will be on, on huge response to something that you know people could say something that people did you know some problem some mistake maybe but that comes from the with the weight of it's like it's like a big huge you know avalanche of emotions which has gathered momentum over the you know because it's not stopped or not dissipated and you know just give vent to that whole thing with all that okay so send them a surprise wow why did I do that? It was a very small thing, right? Um, why did I react this way? Why did I respond that way? Right? Uh, this person is, I, I did not have spoken those words. It was a very small thing because it comes with that weight of unresolved pain. Okay. So um, also, very, uh, you know, if you look, if you look at things, you know, why, why are people hurting? Why are people enjoying hurting others? It's because they are also hurting. Deep within, they are hurting. Of course, you know, when we when we look at the world, we see that yes, it's a whole problem of sin, right? Uh, which uh, which not only motivates but also uh, kind of empowers uh, people to act that way. Right? The whole problem of sin. Uh, but also, it's very important to know that. When people are hurting, they will hurt. Okay, and um, and this is this is true. And you know, if you are having a pet, or you know, if the if the pet is hurt, you know, maybe, maybe it's a pup or a dog, and you know, it's hurt, and uh, you you didn't realize it, and you carried it, and you press that very thing that is hurting, maybe a you know uh, some bone or some wound, and you press that and. And this normally, you know, very, very obedient, very peaceful dog, pup, just turns around and bites, right? Because it's hurting. And that hurt intensity, you know, intensified. And it's just a response, right? It's just a reflex to stop that hurt and do whatever it takes to do that. So. You know, hurt people hurt others. Uh, we need to understand that. Okay. Um, so when if we carry these hurt, okay, we are preparing ourselves to relate to others. If we carry this hurt, then it clouds our objectivity. You know, it uh, it clouds when we have pain. You know, just think about it. Physical pain. If you if you are in physical pain, if you're having pain, it that is all that we are thinking of, right? That is all our mind is processing. And it's very difficult to go beyond that. Okay. okay, we'll take a break and we'll continue with this third principle, the pain principle.